Welcome to 32 and 32, where we count... Anyway, that's beside the point. At the end of the day, it's a business. If you're the Rams, you are officially coming off the absolute worst performance in the Super Bowl ever. I think Robert Kraft is uh, peas in someone else's pod. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Super Bowl wins are so old. I mean, the rings are probably to dust right now. So, not about the Eagles today. We're talking about the Bears. Yeah. So, as usual, let's take a look first at their free agent signings. Day. Thanks for watching, folks. That is today's uh, analysis of the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> Welcome to 32 and 32, where we cover one team each day for 32 straight days, all leading up to kickoff on Thursday Night Football. Today's team is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, before we get started, would y'all like to like call the police or something? Right now, I'm being held here against my will. This is uh, day 15 that I've uh, been stuck here in this dungeon, uh, and I, I'm requesting help. So uh, Silence. <laughs> just playing, y'all. I kill you. No, you won't. <laughs> just playing, yo. Just okay. So, needless to say, last year Jacksonville was a Eight. little bit of a disappointment as uh, they took a little bit. Ain't the word. It, well, they took about a step or two back. Uh, about a few steps back, considering what they did the year before. I mean, making it all the way to the AFC Championship game and taking a tough New England team to the <clears> limit. <throat> I would say it was quite a few steps back. They performed. Uh, significantly below standard last season. I mean, they got four wins. Um, like I said, significantly below standard. You know, the irony of it was the fact that going into into the offseason, they handed Blake Bortles a $56 million contract extension. Well, I mean, he must have learned very well from uh, the Brock Oswald School of Embezzlement. That is that is one way to put it. I would definitely put it in in that category because, um, yeah, everybody knew that he was average at best, at but, best. But the thing is, Blake Bortles, like the year that they made it to the <coughs> AFC Championship game, I mean, they had won their division. I mean, divisional round, they went to Heinz Field in, in the playoffs and completely destroyed the Pittsburgh defense. And they go to New England, and they were, what, maybe a penalty away from probably beating New England? So, the way they performed last season, I mean, and I had a lot of hope for Jacksonville. Because going into last season, Jacksonville was actually my pick to contend for the AFC once again. And they completely just disappointed me. I mean, Leonard Fournette still had problems with injury. Blake Bortles performed completely significantly understand below standard to the point to where he got benched for what Cody Kessler or, or was it Blaine? Yeah. It was Cody Kessler or was it Blaine Gabbert? Both. I think. Yeah. And no, you talking about last year, last season. It was Kessler. Cody Cause, Kessler. Cause uh, Gabbert was in San Francisco. That that's, that's right. That's right. Uh, I, I think. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, it, it was Cody Kessler. It was Kessler, <coughs> but like, come on, Jacksonville. And after this season, the front office was like, it's time for a change. And they shipped Bortles off to, to L.A. And they got Foles Magic, Nick Foles. They say that that's the guy with the biggest balls in the league. And uh, So I guess we're taking a look at a free agency, which, yeah, exactly. Nick Foles is obviously the centerpiece of that. Um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, they, they gave him $86 million And, uh I mean, he he was good in what little time he had in abs in the absence of um, uh, um, Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. But with him getting in, I mean, the, he came through for the Eagles when the Eagles needed him the most. That that like Nick Foles, he's pr probably the most reliable quarterback in the league. He like he has clutch and he has reliability. Two factors that a lot of quarterbacks lack in, and. Nick Foles proved how cold his blood is, how cold the blood in his veins are. You know, and at the very worst, he has a lot, a lot of uh, quality leadership. I mean, <clears throat> he's the type of quarterback you want in your locker room, and I think Jacksonville pretty much hit the lottery by getting Nick Foles. And I feel that the Jacksonville offense is going to be a lot better, especially signing Alfred Blue, who's going to add depth to the running back position because Leonard Fournette can't stay healthy. I mean, there's no telling how much production you can get out of T.J. Yeldon. He can show up any time that he wants to. So having an extra running back is going to add depth to a struggling backfield. So, 
I mean, yeah, and I, uh, I fully agree with that because as good as Fournette is, uh, is um, and was at LSU, I mean, he was phenomenal at LSU. And he was phenomenal during his rookie season, and uh, we got that too. He has had problems with injury, and so adding Alfred Blue to that, who is, while not the, the biggest name in free agency, is still a solid running back that can go out there and has had a handful of uh, uh, triple-digit uh, yard games in his career. So it, it's it's um, a good strategy to go in and uh, find someone to back up Fournette like that. I did notice that um, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars added to their line with Chris Conley and Cedric... Uh, oh, oh, Obucci. Obucci. Okay. Yeah, that guy. Well, I got, I got to put some people out there with uh, Cam Robinson. Well, you know, I mean, Jacksonville already had a pretty solid line, but I, I guess they felt they needed to uh, boost it a little. Well, because of how injury-prone Leonard Fournette has gotten, they want to take every precaution <clears throat> possible to protect Leonard Fournette during the game whenever he is healthy. Uh, I feel that would be a logical reason to add to your offensive linemen, and you can never have too many offensive linemen. I mean, the more depth, the better. Yeah, you know, unless you start taking away from other positions. You know, so it should be interesting to watch Jacksonville with Nick Foles. Uh, I'm excited to watch. Uh, let's take a little look at their draft. Obviously, the jewel of their draft is Josh, Josh Allen. And, I mean, there are some people saying that he was probably the best player in the draft. I mean, the guy is a freak of nature. Oh. I mean, he could probably – I mean, he kind of reminds me a little bit of like a like a Javon Kearse a little bit. Okay. Because, I mean, Javon Kearse was a freak athlete uh, during his time in Tennessee. And I, I see a little bit of him in Josh Allen. So some of the other two names, there's two names on here that kind of attracted my attention. One was Josh Oliver of um, was it Jose State, San Jose. Yeah, San Jose State. Uh, he started out as a linebacking prospect for them, but switched over to tight end and uh, was actually pretty decent. His career low for yards per catch was, I want to say, 8.6 or something like that with with a career high of like 12 point five his senior year yeah uh his senior year he had 56 catches and i want to see like eight touchdowns something like that I and mean, he's drafted a little low he's not the best prospect out there after all he is coming out of san uh, uh, san jose a relatively struggling football program um but jacksonville doesn't have a history of having a good tight end i mean they tried to marry his thomas for a little while but quite honestly if we were to be absolutely honest i think thomas was more of a product of peyton manning yeah I mean, that's he didn't work out he hasn't really worked out anywhere else but that, 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 that's that, that beside the point uh, another one uh, one that kind of stood out to me was Juwan taylor who was probably one of the best offensive linemen in the sec I mean, and, you know, of course, Cam Robinson is a partner, especially, you know, on, on, on the other side of the offensive line. Uh, my concern is his, his bad knee. Uh, but he was projected as a top 15 pick before the draft even started. But I think it was injuries, you know, that kind of affected his stock. But he is – he's very physical, and, I mean, I feel that he's going to do well on the right side. So I guess we should, should point out um – one of the, I guess, the the big question marks of their draft um, as to how they're going to pan out, not whether or not they're any good. But Quincy Williams, younger brother of Quentin Williams. Will he perform as well as his brother? I mean, he's, I want to say he's a safety, so obviously they, they play two different positions. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, you look at the work ethic and the physicality of Quentin Williams. And no, <laughs> I mean, yes, Quentin Williams is a nose tackle. And Quincy Williams is a safety. But, I mean, the safety position does have – it does bring physicality. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I want to see if he's going to bring that, you know, the the same work ethic that I'm pretty sure Quentin Williams is going to bring to the New York Jets. I mean, I'm curious to see the type of work ethic and the type of physicality Quincy Williams is going to bring to Jacksonville. Mm hmm Oh, uh, yeah, he was – um, he was, a, he was not nearly as uh, sought after as his brother Quentin was – um, which is kind of why he ended up where he went, and and this, the uh, school escapes me at the moment. Uh, it was, I want to say Mountain West. 
could be wrong about that. Uh, it was Murray State. Murray State. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's a curious draft draft class for Jacksonville. I mean, he is. I mean, he's a safety that weighs two hundred twenty five pounds. I mean, the guy is huge. Yeah. <laughs> I. I <laughs> Yeah, I forgot about that. 225 pounds. Yeah. And didn't he run a decent 40? I think he did. Uh, it's like four, five or something like that? Means for it to be 225 pounds, that's pretty damn good. Uh, one pick that stood out to me was Gardner Minshew, quarterback out of Washington State. I mean, he was drafted the sixth round. I mean, I'm surprised because a lot of Mike Leach – quarterbacks don't really make it far in the league if they make it to the league at all. I mean, I, I mean, a prime example would be Graham Harrell. I mean, he played like back in the gap versus uh, Texas Tech. He played under Mike <clears throat> Leach and I don't even think he was drafted. He was able to have a career. I mean, those are basically Mike, Mike Leach quarterbacks. And don't get me wrong, Mike Leach is, is a quarterback whisperer on the college level. I mean, he's a guy, he's produced a lot of great quarterbacks, a lot of legendary players on the college level. But as far as quarterbacks, I mean, his quarterbacks are the epitome of system QBs, and usually they don't. So hopefully Jacksonville uses Gardner Minshew, right? Hopefully they make him into a pro- project because there's no telling how much longer Nick Foles has in the NFL. I mean, Nick Foles has been in NFL for quite a minute. So hopefully they'll, they'll have Gardner Minshew just learn under Nick Foles, and Nick Foles takes him under his wing to where Minshew can be productive in his career. All right. Well, so we shall we shall see what happens with Jacksonville. Um, they are obviously in a very what has become a very tough division. Obviously, you have Houston, uh, who is you know one of the better teams in the league. They've they've won I want to say division title three of the last five seasons. Uh, and then you have Indianapolis. Indianapolis, who is coming coming on strong. They they you know, like we said. Earlier, uh, you know, obviously they started one and five, then won like nine straight or something like that. And then you have Tennessee. Ten, and then there's Tennessee, which and it looks like they they're improving every year. I mean, though they missed the playoffs last season, uh, Mike Vrabel seems to have them on the right track. But I mean, <coughs> Marcus Mariota, his, his leash is getting a lot tighter with that front office. So this is kind of like his make it or break it year, and then we're seeing a lot of improvement from Derrick Henry. He's starting to evolve every season. So, so tough division. Each each of the four teams in that division has made the playoffs in the last two years. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, I would not be surprised if two wild cards come from, from this division. I expect at least one. I think it's going to be two. Uh, but with that division, it's going to be a fight to the finish of who makes the playoffs in the AFC. And whoever makes the playoffs in the AFC is going to make some noise. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... But the wild cards I mean it said don't underestimate the wild card, and the, this that this is a division to where you cannot underestimate any team. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm like I have a lot of hope for Jacksonville again. Jacksonville, I'm gonna give y'all another shot to to prove to me that y'all are uh, a, a for real contender in the AFC. Y'all have Nick Foles. Y'all have a, a, a very decent draft class. Strong y'all, defense. Strong defense. I mean. You got Kalias Kim on your defensive line. Come on. And you got Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Bouye in your secondary. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so I'm excited to watch Jacksonville again. Um, looks like they fixed their quarterback issues. So that wraps up Jacksonville for this uh, preseason uh, preview, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. <laughs>